Hey everybody, this is Dr. Leah Hahn with Body and Balance, and today I just wanted to give you a glimpse into some of the parameters or um, different pieces of information we use when we're analyzing someone's spine with network spinal analysis and how we can make specific changes based on the types of findings that we're looking for, what we're analyzing. So this is Jen, I'm gonna have her rest on the table. And the first thing that I wanted to talk to you about today is passive tension. So when I'm analyzing passive tension, what that means is I'm actually seeing how much flexibility is in the spine and how um, different levels of tension are stored in the spine. So what that, what that means in passive tension is if I were to feel someone's spine, I would want there to be give to it. If I feel an area of someone's spine and there's absolutely no give to it, what I'm actually looking at in that kind of a situation is that that area is an area where the, the patient has chronically stored tension. Now, so when I'm feeling Jen's spine, I'm actually gonna go in and I'm gonna move my hands along the spine and I'm looking for the whole spine to have a level of flexibility. If there's an area that doesn't have that flexibility, I'm thinking that that patient has had an issue in that area for a very long time. If I were to go in and apply, apply a very direct, very harsh force to that part of the spine where there's a lot of that passive tension, it can actually flare someone's symptoms and make them worse. Instead, we wanna gently work around that area to help that passive and structural tension release from the spine. So it's one way that we're really able to analyze with network spinal, spinal analysis what's happening within someone's body which when we get that information, it can help us determine the cause of migraines, what's happening with um, headaches, neck tension, lower back tension, sciatica. It's just one of the measurements we take. I hope that's helpful information and I'll see you next time.